Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today we are having a special guest, and we're going to be and we're going to be talking about preparations for patch eight point one. Introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. It's uh, forty four Mike here, Antoine. How is it going today? It's going good. So today we're going to be discussing, like I said, the patch eight point one, and what you should be doing for preparations towards eight point one. And the reason for that is, is because a lot of players right now, 90%, probably more than 90% of the player base is not in Legendary 1 or Legendary 2. So what should these guys be doing right now, in your opinion? Uh, they, well, since they don't have to have one strong unit, they could have multiple uh, mid-range units to take advantage of, well, the choice of unit, basically, right? So right. maybe you're the guy that got really, uh, or let's say that you have the same setup as me, one strong MBT and one strong Howitzer. Now would be the time to work on a rocket truck, on the BM. And the BM is the most effective unit at defeating Howitzer. So you could work on that and try to uh, be more uh, effective against enemy howitzer. That's solid. Right now, in preparation of 8.1, this is me, per se. I don't, I'm not saying everyone has to do this. I know that I won't be in Legendary 1 Battlefield for a very long time, and I do plan on migrating eventually. But what can I do in the meantime, I ask myself? Well, I started collecting units to develop other units in the Battlefield so that way I can have a stronger base, stronger setup, because if you look at my units right now, I currently only have two two modern ground units, a 9.1 Liberty Heli, a 9-star modern MBT, and a modern fighter. Now, I plan on running three fighters, but right now I am trying to de I'm trying to do develop, so that way I can use more units on the battlefield and this will help me progress. So that way, each time my unit hits a cap, then I can go on to the next battle tier. Possibly with the same alliance or a different alliance, it does not matter to me on, the, on that aspect. But right now, as I see right here, as you can see, I have started collecting howitzers to get units up to 7.1. And the reason for that is so that way I can quickly build 7.1 units and not have to wait for that lucky draw for the howitzer. Because for me, Liberty Howitzer is probably the hot, hardest unit to pull, along with the Liberty Fighter and also the Light Tanks. I never get these units, so I started collecting them and building towards them. <clears throat> Anything you want to add to that? No, that's pretty complete. And... Maybe it, it, it would be a good time for you, the player, to think about what unit should or what or which next unit work best for your style. Maybe a unit that you never thought of, about assembling. In my case, let's say I always wanted to play the light tank because uh, light tank, it's good when you're doing or be, you're being a lone wolf or trying to hit reserves, trying to go behind the enemy lines. If this is your kind of gameplay, now is the time to work on a light tank. Or maybe you want an helicopter. Why the helicopter? Well, it does. It's not affected by the landscape. You can have a shortcut, cross a uh, uh, travel across a mountain and hit uh, enemy reserves for, uh, in the back. So. I mean, there's a lot of strategies, a lot of plan that you can do if you have the proper unit. So you have to think about that. Yes. So for my setup, I've kind of chosen to have a MBT, a heli, a light tank, two Liberty howitzers, two Vanguard fighters, and also um, one one Liberty fighter. I might eventually change out to a liberty mbt down the road just for camp buff but right now i'm running a 5-2 camp buff with my setup as i have it planned and i'm pretty happy with it and i think people should take this opportunity as well to understand the camp buff and to actually utilize it and start building towards that 
it's a very underrated thing because it takes forever to build one unit to max. And I think this will bring that into into play now, so to speak. Yeah, I agree. The chem buff is kind of underrated. Many ignore it. It does gives you free significant bonus if you do the right thing. And but it's a kind of a two. Um, there's pro and con uh, with the chem buff. Let's say that you want to focus on liberty because that's the most unit you believe that will be uh, more effective. Then you will need a lot of researches, not a researches, but you will need more coupons from Liberty to achieve your goal, right? Uh, you may have extra coupon or extra prototype of Martyr's Watch and Vanguard because you focus on Liberty. But once you, let's say that you have four or five units of the same camp, you get a pretty strong bonus. But I think the best camp to focus on, if we, if I, I just want to finish on that, I think the more versatile camp is a uh, Martyr's Watch. They have Howitzers, they have a Rocket Truck, they have OK Planes, uh, and anything you need. Uh, as let's say Vanguard, Vanguard doesn't have any Howitzer, so you may think about that. Yes, uh, I think each. I honestly, the, I think the. The most versatile tree, I believe, is Martyr's Watch. However, they do lack the punch on their other units, other than, um, say, the Martyr Howitzer, the Martyr Rocket Truck. Those units are top of the line. Like, the Martyr Howitzer is meant for taking out uh, enemy vehicles, but it does but it does get outshined by the Liberty Howitzer, in my opinion, because of that fast reload. But the but the rocket truck does the most structure damage in the game. Hands yeah, down. I agree. The rocket truck is a ton of fun to play. You can one shot pretty much uh, all the howitzer out there, and I think that's that was the intention of Lilith when they they made that game. It, it's very well made. I mean, because you have to make a compromise. You cannot have all every unit of the same camp rank, and even if you do so, you have to make a compromise as the Let's say Martyr's Watch Howitzer is not the best one. It's not the preferred one. The Liberty one is better. But then again, if you have five Liberty ground units, you will be lacking of something. So, yes, yeah, because like uh, Martyrs lacks uh, the Martyr camp units lack firepower, but they make up for it in survivability. Like for example, um, the Martyr helicopter has very high health and an additional pen damage but it lacks in the movement speed it lacks in the overall firepower and the mbt i think for the modders now that i have one is very well adapted to tanking units and tanking bases where the vanguard mbt is very good on field fighting but it has the drawback of speed and then the liberty mbt has the high firepower the high speed but it lacks in the health, so it could die very quickly. So yep. it's it's more so like a matter of preference overall. You gotta find this balance amongst your units. For me, I I love the Vanguard fighter because I'm very active with my fighter, and I chose the Liberty fighter because it's kind of the second best fighter. It's the jack of all trades, master of none. Whereas the Martyr Fighter is more about survivability, being able to dodge and stay in the fight longer, and the Vanguard is all about that, all about getting in that opponent's face with that. So yeah. that's yeah. yeah. Sorry, I did to cut you off. Yeah, that that's the kind of compromise compromise you need to make. But on the other side, the cam buff will outweigh this compromise. I know somebody made a video about which mbt is the best which helicopter is the best that's that's awesome but this is baseline okay and baseline yeah. is only good on paper you don't fight on paper you fight on the field and it the how you use your unit it makes a huge difference rather than what the unit have uh, strength and weaknesses and anyways with all the tech, the buff, the skin set buff, the city post buff, uh, VIP buff, and whatnot, then it doesn't mean anything anymore. 
Exactly. Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to have the same exact level of parts. Mm -hmm. Someone might actually have a stronger barrel or more or uh, less wrenches than me in the mechanics. That will give me a slight edge. It, everyone has a different scenario. So when you're building these units, I would suggest you build either towards camp buff or you build towards the parts you already have. Yep, and when I say definitely. parts, you already because it's so hard to get good parts. Yep. Yep, for sure. Yep, that's and that's why I did that. I, when I first started the game, I focused on one camp. I've read everything I could, and I realized that the camp rank was the the most effective bonus you could get for free. And I start working on that, doing my, my Vanguard mission for Vanguard camp and whatnot. Then I, w I got lucky enough to draw some pretty good parts from uh, for Vanguard camp, uh, Vanguard tank, sorry. Uh, you may not be lucky, but I mean, if you focus on, on camp, uh, camp rank, camp, yeah, if you, if you focus on camp bonus, that will definitely give you the edge. Yes. Another thing you need to consider also guys is in this preparation you should be looking at officers you should be thinking about what officers you're going to need for these units so like for me i'm working on finishing up my saber of nation for my howitzer <laughs> i'm working on war machine as a flex unit because he's pretty solid and you can get him for free i'm looking at tip of spear for base defense and also he will do i think pretty well on a light tank with lady liberty I'm also looking at from this is just in my scenario, guys. I'm slowly working on Winter Huntsman as well. I'm also looking at actually Tiger Marauder. This might be actually surprise you. Yeah. Mag, I'm working, <laughs> yes, I'm it does working. because yeah, sorry, we talked about that in an earlier video, and this officer, your your argument or your your explanation is well, it's a it's a good option for the new player. Yes. Now let me explain why I'm looking at him. You're gonna. You, this might baffle you a little bit. There's not a lot of tank officers in the game, but there is a lot of versatile officers that can fill the roles on tanks. So, for the light tank, you know, I'm looking at like possibly using Lady Liberty, who does good, very good, solid damage overall and has decent. Uh, damage resist, a good tactic, a good uh, waken skill, but I need something there to supplement that pretty well. And he provides. Uh, hold on, you said La Lady Liberty, isn't she a howitzer oh, no, officer? No, no. Oh, my bad. I mean, Lady Justice. My bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Lady Lady Justice has good damage, good tactical skill, good awaken skill, one of the highest damage resists in the game. Has that crit skill? She has a lot of options there. So what yes. I'm why the reason why I'm looking at Tiger Marauder is because he's a solid filler. He, what he'll bring to the table will actually give me a little bit of survivability with the passive he, repair, the actual additional damage resist. He'll increase firepower, and his, when he is awakened, which I don't recommend using until he's awakened, is that his salvo damage is actually on par with her damage so that will actually might be a benefit and a, a solid filler so to speak so that he may fill that role as a fill unit but yeah, other, you. Yeah. the other officers i'm looking at is argent flame thorn countess vox and once saber of the nation is done i'm going to start working on lady liberty god it takes forever for these exclusive lounge officers but it's totally worth it at the end yeah they, they are expensive it's a long process but like you said once you awaken those exclusive officers they pack a punch i mean they they are worth the weight or worth the investment so to speak uh yes. they, they are kind of they give you they will give you the edge yes so currently on my air force side i'm working on blade wing so I can have a solid air fighter plane. And I'm using him with Witcher right now because Witcher I can freely um, awaken. I will put some unis in her just to awaken her faster. I'm looking at Silver Comet. 
I'm looking at also Wings of Glory for this and Polar Phantom for my uh, for my uh, fighter plane officers, and I'm probably gonna also awaken um, Brisk Eagle because she's pretty versatile, and I think she would be yes. very good going forward on any unit. So, yeah. but as we both know, Air Force officers are very lacking. So. I can't. I gotta wait until I can get either new officers are dropped, or I gotta make do with what I got. Mm-hmm. But that's. I, so, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I. I. You know what? I, I'm. My prediction is, the next uh, exclusive officer will be, the upcoming. Uh, the up, upcoming exclusive officer will be, an Air Force officer. I feel it. A fighter officer. A jet officer. And I'm waiting for that one because I now I have enough statues for to awaken one. There's so many options. I'm kind of lost, so I need to do my research and and find which will be uh, uh, best for my style. Regardless, I, I believe that the next next officer will be an Air Force one. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm right. <laughs> I'm hoping you're right for you and me both because I need him as well. I need him more than I need tank officers, which I want Professor Payne. I want Lord of Order, but I can't get him. Not until I have to prioritize what I need. Yes, but, yes. So, um, but, and here's another thing. It might actually be an infantry officer that comes as an exclusive. Because there's, be. not many, because there's not many infantry officers in the game currently. And also, a lot of people, they were trying to increase the people using the infantry officers. I mean, the infantry yeah. units. So that would make sense for them to do that. But there, It will well, make sense to promote this unit a little bit more. Now I'm seeing more and more players using one or, or even two infantry units. And once you get a maxed out infantry units, you're pretty much immune to any unit except the rocket truck. Okay, bombers, they don't have any effect on you. Helicopters, they don't affect you. Maybe a large army group, but one unit versus one unit, one on one on one situation. And even a, a rocket truck, if you are the first unit to engage, you may even defeat that rocket truck. As you know, the rocket truck will counter the infantry. But strong infantry with good tech, wow, they are perfect for tanking, and they're awesome on the field. I mean, they are. They used to be a running joke back then when I started playing. Nobody was using them. But yep. now uh, players are thinking about developing this unit, and the potential is huge. On that topic, on that topic, we're not going to, we're not going to, Walk away from that real quick. I'm going to quickly just do this real quick so we can unlock modify. As you can see right here, also, it's cheaper to upgrade an infantry unit to all the way up. It's actually cheaper than most other units because they have less to modify as well. Oh. Okay, that's good news. I didn't notice that. I think, I think that's true. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I can quickly reset a unit. It don't matter to me. But I think it's cheaper overall. I didn't, I'm not 100% sure, but someone was telling me that, and I didn't really pay any mind to it, but I, I did notice when I looked at it that it had less modifications. It makes sense. Yeah, so actually, no, they're the same. Oh, okay. Bummer. Yeah, because I'm looking at it right now. But it's pretty, it's, I wouldn't say that they're entirely wrong. I feel just because they have less, you might feel like you're growing faster, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but you, you, the thing, it, it would be logical. I mean, yeah, I was hoping that you were right because let's say that you are you committed to tank, howitzer, and um, airplanes. 
And now yes. you have to think about infantry, and if you neglect infantry, you're starting from scratch. All the way uh, you need to, to work on that tech uh, from the, the beginning, and it's a long process. So this this is kind of it, it, this is my situation right now. I mean, I'm thinking I st I, I can assemble right now a 7.2 off uh, infantry unit, but I'm I'm not gonna do it yet as my tech I have zero tech. So what's the point of having a, a good infantry with good parts if you have zero tech? So it's kind of pointless. So that's why I'm holding on that infantry unit. I and by the time I will finish the modern tech, well. I may not be alive still, so. We'll <laughs> yeah, like I haven't even. I've only put two into infantry tech so far. I've actually debated it. I've actually really have debated it. Um, I'm actually still thinking on the fence about that because I have. I'm actually thinking of switching out the Liberty um, light tank to infantry Liberty infantry because of that smoke screen. And they're kind of like the jack of all trades, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you're a new player out there, this is the time for you to work on the infantry. Yes. A guy like me, it's pointless for the new player out there because I know a lot of new players watch our videos and, yes. and use our videos as reference. That's, that's awesome. But this is the tip. If you want to have a strong unit, don't neglect infantry. Infantry is awesome. Mm-hmm. And also, one of the best officers for infantry you can get for free, White Wolf. Yes. You, you can awaken her for free. It'll take a long time if you don't invest unis. But you can awaken her through um, officer missions, and sh she goes very well in pairings with almost anyone. So yeah, she is totally free. worth the investment. Yeah, yeah, she's worth it, and she's very useful when the infantry gets a buff in the arena. A lot of players, they neglect infantry, and in the arena, when you have good infantry uh, officers, it makes a huge difference. Mm, I'm actually, you know what, I might actually do that. <laughs> you know that? I might actually do that, Mag. You're kind of selling me on some shit. <laughs> that, that's the only reason I work on those two infantry officers, not the, the recent one, uh, ba Iron Bastion or something, uh, but the White Wolf and Angel of Light. Those two officers, the main reason was for the arena. When you have the infantry buffed, or if you use the infantry in the, in the, in the arena, they really shine there, right? It gives you uh, the edge. Yes, yes. And actually, this actually, I'm actually thinking I'm going to do that. I'm actually thinking I'm going to do that because remember I said tip of spear, right? Yes. Well, that'll actually save me some time and investment, and I can awake quickly awaken um, White Wolf. And because I already have to do, I'll just have to do one more tech tree, but that's okay because I'm still small in comparison to you and a lot of other players. This actually might be a good thing. Yeah, it's a viable option for you. For me, not so much. Yeah. I'll have to get some parts, but that's about it, because I have zero parts right now. I have one part. <laughs> oh, trust me. You'll get plenty. It just play a little bit more. You'll get plenty of infantry parts. I have a crap load of them, and I think that Lilith knows I will never use infantry, so I keep drawing infantry parts that I don't need. That's the story of my life. Yes, yes. Oh. Well, with that said, I think we I think we prepared the audience pretty well on this. All right, yep. I think the you got to hear our thoughts on it. I think it's going to be a good thing. Let me get, show you why real quick, guys. I'm 144 million right now with a 20% buff. And I'm in Silver 1. Now, Silver 1, what would you think would be a healthy power level for Silver 1, Mag? Well, now these days, I don't know. I mean, Silver 1, let's say, at, at, at 140, 150 in Silver 1, I think you're, you're, you're up there. More than yeah. that, it's, it's not overkill, but it's, 
kind of uh, maybe you grew, you outgrew the rest of your your teammates. It's possible, but I would expect, yeah, players around that power level in silver one. Yeah. See, this silver one is actually pretty balanced, but there is some whales that you can't really contend with that are well above that pay grade. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find them right now. For example, if I think if you're closer to 200 million, you should be in like, like this one right here. Um, you should be definitely in gold you know one two three you know you should be in that pet power grade or even even legendary two um you know like there's a few of them around here but that's a prime example um but they're not impossible to kill they're just really difficult looking for power level yeah i i, I get you i mean power level is one thing it's it, some players they just like to maybe spend for in the game they just like the upgrade aspect of the game it's possible yeah. and they maybe log in once every other day which is possible because maybe they're really busy in real life i think they fit in silver one as the the activity level is not the same as gold or legendary but if you have a very active and strong player in silver one this is where I have a problem with this. You do not belong there. Silver one is either for the lower tier level, the lower uh, power level, or maybe the casual player that doesn't commit to the game. That, that's, that's what the spirit of this battleground is, in my right. opinion. If, if you want to fight hard, then that's awesome. You should, I mean, you shouldn't be facing a lines that only play for pure fun. Right, so that's my take on it. I agree. Like I, I, like I was showing right there. I accidentally exited off. I didn't mean to. Um, definitely for the casual player. Definitely for players who can't be online that long. But um, like this right here, you can see that that's a little overkill. Two fifty five, two seventy one. But here's the thing: the the all these high powered players will join an alliance and then they just fill it with alts. Oh, you see, and then they just very small accounts, just so that way they can get into the battleground and fight, which is a very common thing now, unfortunately. Uh, maybe in silver, I I didn't see much alt in. Legendary. I've seen. I mean, the, the the one we're in right now that is that just ended. By the way, I've seen three or four outs, but the alliance was not complete. So maybe they 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 want to have fillers. Um, but I mean, in the end, in legendary one, having outs in your alliances is, is not going to help. That 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 is a, a liability. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're going to have to wrap this up here. My wife's getting antsy. <laughs> Not going to lie, guys, that was my wife. She showed up. <laughs> um, so, as you guys know, we are here to help you guys. And this video was meant to help you guys prepare for 8.1. You also got our personal look at units and what our thoughts are. And our thought process, process, uh, processes on this. If you guys found this video helpful, please drop a follow, like, and subscribe. And also, if you, you're not, go over to Antonio V. Kuriak. He'll be in the link below in the description. And drop him a follow as well. And he drops tons of useful content as well. And if you guys want to take it a step further, you guys could join our community Discord and talk to us one-on-one. -on -one